So today I uh, spoke at an investment conference in front of 2,000 people, didn't need to prepare. It was fantastic. It was easy. But all day I was nervous <laughs> about what I was going to say in front of an important audience uh, honoring Morris Offit um, about Hillel. And I thought um, maybe I would make it so intensely personal that it would either bomb or you might actually find it interesting. Um, but I think, um, so I thought I'd give perspectives uh, the perspective on a sort of a portrait of a of a Jew from Westchester um, growing up, and I, I, I put together this almost like a mosaic of my life, moments of uh, of Jewish identity. So I'm going to give it a shot. If it doesn't work, you're going to invite someone else next year anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so my earliest Jewish memory: I'm three or four years old, and as like young boys do, I was sitting around playing with my body, and I noticed something that looked funny. And I asked my father about this, and he explained to me what circumcision was and what, what a covenant was. That was my first Jewish memory. Um, I told you it was intensely personal. <laughs> uh, eight years old, I had a different memory. Uh, uh, I, my, I grew up in a community, a, a Chappaqua was actually, you think of it almost like a Jewish town, uh, but it certainly wasn't when I was a kid. And a uh, fairly an anti-Semitic neighborhood. My, actually, my neighborhood, there was a uh, restriction in the deed. Uh, in the community, you, you could not be Jewish and live in our neighborhood. My parents, you know, that, the laws changed, I think, in the mid-60s. We, we were the second Jewish family in the neighborhood. Um, and one of my neighbors picked on me, actually beat me up, called me an anti-Semitic slur. So that was an interesting Jewish moment. And then there are the more happy, warmer ones, and they always seem to center a bit around food. So I think about bagels and lox and matzo brai and pot roast and chopped liver and, of course, Chinese food. You know. <laughs> Heard that earlier. And then there's chanting the four questions, uh, Passover. And then, a, you know, maybe not as good a memory, why we didn't, you know, why are we not a member of the country club across the street? Why are we driving so far? And my parents explained to me why we weren't a member. Um, and then I went to summer camp in Maine. It wasn't a Jewish camp, but everyone was Jewish. You know, so I thought that was interesting. Learned about family, learned about how Jews think about their kids. And then I think about the many, many hours I spent, and it's you know, maybe 12 hour service, that was my perception as a child, the high holy days at Temple Bethel. Um, although the very, a few very powerful moments, I, I, I uh, you know, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, my, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And when I was a kid, somehow that really, very powerful, resonated in my life. Uh, and then I remember watching, there was a TV series when I was about 10 or 11 years old on the Holocaust. My parents made me watch it, and it was incredibly graphic. I, I don't know if you remember, if you can think that far back, but that had a very powerful impact on me and, um, and my perception of myself as a Jew. And then I remember my sister preparing for her bat mitzvah uh, and then watching her um, deliver her service uh, at the temple. And then, of course, bagels and lox and matzo brai and pot roast, chopped liver, Chinese food again. Um, then my bar mitzvah and then spin the bottle at the after party. <laughs> um, and it was at a French restaurant, first bar mitzvah they ever had, and all of a sudden it became the place to do bar mitzvah parties. Uh, then I remember my dad leading the campaign to build a new temple in Chappaqua, and raising the financing and putting a shovel in the ground, and I watched it happen. Um, and philanthropy was actually very, my father, I, I think of philanthropy is not something, uh, I, it's not something that you, that you have genetically. It's actually taught to you. And if, you're, if you've got a philanthropic parent or parents, uh, it's something that you learn and you have to teach it. And actually, I, I've not done a great job. I've, I've had a very successful company, uh, but I've not done a great job teaching uh, philanthropy to my employees. I'm working on that. Um, but I had a father, and I still do, of course. I would, now he's an office down the hall from me, but he taught me about what it meant to be charitable. And, uh, um, and then my grandpa Irving, uh, building inspector, married to a New York City to, uh, school teacher, Kew Gardens, Queens, the classic Jewish warm grandfather who give you a big kiss and you'd have to wipe off, you know, <laughs> the saliva. I remember my first girlfriend, uh, Lisa Schwartz, so, so far so good. And then, of course, bagels and locks. <laughs> you, you, you get the idea. Um, and then, at some point, my parents started talking to me about why it was important to marry a Jewish girl. Okay, that was still a little bit early. I mean, I'm, I'm in like high school, so what is this? <laughs> and then education, right? Doing your homework. Um, again, this is, you know, intensely a, a Jewish thing. Um, and then my dad and why, why I should be an entrepreneur. 
uh, why I shouldn't. And then he talked to me about his experience. He went to Harvard Business School. He got a job uh, for the summer working for Chase Bank. And then they, uh, the, uh, at the end of the summer, he was given a job offer. And the guy who gave him the job offer told him, I wouldn't take the job. Because as a Jew, you're not going to be successful here. But you did an outstanding job. We're going to give you an offer. My recommendation, he was remarkably honest. And again, J.P. Morgan's gone a long way since, since back then. Um, and I think about my closest high school friends, my friend Chris. And then I learned that his family invented the bra. Uh, <laughs> and it was a Shmata family. Maiden Forum uh, was their company. And he grew up Unitarian, but he identified as a Jew. And it was interesting how the connection that we made. Uh, and of course, the grandparents moved to Florida. I mean, this is the classic Jewish upbringing. Um, of course, I had an uncle who was a rabbi. Um, and then a mom who worries. She's probably worried what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> um, and then how it was important to go to a good college and a good school. And then some bad things happened in my life, but the Jewish community played an important role. You know, my, my, uh, my grandfather had a heart attack while he was on a cruise ship in South America, and they pulled over to the closest country, which was Venezuela. And uh, it was actually a Jewish doctor that uh, took care of him, but my parents flew down to be with my, uh, be with my grandfather. It was the Jewish community that, that welcomed them and looked after them, uh, my grandfather. And then I was fortunate I went to Harvard College. I get to this you know, impressive institution, pretty waspy place, though. So what did I do? I joined the crew team to meet some other Jewish kids. Uh, <laughs> and uh, now I'm sort of heading off in the wrong direction. My first college uh, girlfriend was... Uh, Catherine Kennedy, and she was Mormon. Okay, then the, lect then the drum beat about how, why it was important to marry a Jewish girl. My parents flew up. <laughs> I mean, Dad, I'm, I've gone on a couple of dates, but, you know, they were concerned. <laughs> and then it was Sarai Brockman, I think, who saved me. Uh, and uh, Sarah is still a good friend of mine. Maybe some of you know her. Uh, but Sarai, you know, came to knocked on the door and said, Hey, Bill, how about uh, Shabbat dinner? Let's go to Hillel. And she took me to Hillel. And uh, now the food was much better at Hillel. So I think, by the way, if I were giving recommendations, make sure we have the best food on campus. <laughs> okay. Huge, huge strategy of food, very important part. Um, and I started heading a little bit more in the right direction. Uh, junior year, I took a, uh, actually it was because of rowing. So Marty Parrott's uh, junior seminar was the most in-demand seminar at Harvard. It was a seminar on ethnicity. Everyone wanted to be in Marty's class because he really connected with the students. And it was completely sold out. I didn't know who Marty Parrott's was. I wasn't particularly interested in ethnicity. But because I rode in the rowing team, the only social studies seminar that I could take was Marty Parrott's seminar. So I went to the top of the list. I was in Marty's class. And Marty actually has been a very important person to me over the course of my life. Very, got very interested in the topic. Ended up writing a thesis. It was called Scaling the Ivy Wall, the Jewish and Asian Experience in Harvard Admissions. And I wrote about uh, Jews coming to Harvard in the 1890s and... Uh, President Lowell in the 1920s, and uh, quotas, and how the mission policy changed, and what it meant, and how Jews adapted. You know, I, I made the argument, um, you, you know, it, it, and the same thing happened to Asian Americans, because they showed up at Harvard uh, wanting to be valedictorians and forgetting about uh, what was fascinating about a university, actually, is that if controlling the admission policy you can have a huge impact on the world. Like if you control the admission policy of an important university, you have an impact on what people try to do to apply and succeed at the university. So I made the argument in my thesis that Michael Chang would never have won the French Open if Harvard hadn't changed its admission policies to keep Jews out in the 1920s. You know, it was personal qualities, geographic diversity, and extracurricular activities that Harvard used instead of quotas as a way to round out the class. Um, and those things affected the community and affected, that's why I wrote at Harvard. Um, and then, Bill, you have to marry a Jewish girl. But then I spent more time at Hillel. Uh, I didn't make it there every Friday night, um, but there was a place and there was a community and uh, a connection and a home away from home. And, uh, and yes, I married a Jewish girl from Harvard, no less. Uh, so I want to thank Hillel for asking me to speak tonight um, and uh, helping provide, uh, I guess, my, a big part of my identity. So there you go. A bit intensely personal. Uh, it's rare you get to hear about a circumcision in an evening like this. <laughs> Thank you. And, and lastly, on Morsoff. And Morsoff, I don't know that well. I've, I've, I know him in, the, in business. I, he's a partner. He's someone I've met with occasionally. Um, but the guy is a mensch. I mean, and so the thing I was puzzled by is, is it was Morris W. Offit. And I thought that the W was upside down. So there you go. M for mensch.